In this video, we're going to talk about um, using a, a multiple table query in Microsoft Access. Uh, so here we have a typical database. This is actually the, the tables from the Northwind database that comes with Microsoft Access. Uh, let's go into the customers table. And here you're going to see that we have uh, 87 records in the customers table. And then I'm going to go into the orders table. And here we're going to see that we have 830 records in the orders table. And then let's go into the shippers table. And here we have three records. Okay. So I'm going to make a new query using the, uh, at least two or three of those tables. So I'm going to pick on the create menu. And we'll pick on query design. And uh, let's start with the customers table. Then we'll add the orders table first. And then we'll add the other one later on. Now, in this case, it actually found a common field automatically, and it made that assumption for you. Now, if you wanted to delete that relationship, you can do that, but in this case, it's actually correct. Uh, it, those tables are joined by the common field customer ID. From the customers table, I want to pick on the company name, and from the orders table, perhaps I'll pick the order date and the order amount. Now, um, the, this is a special kind of join here. This is called an inner join. Now, an inner join means that the data uh, has to be on both tables to be shown in this query. So, in other words, it, it's only going to show the records where the customer ID is on both sides. So, I'm going to run this. And it's going to give us 799 records. Now, uh, that, that, that happens to mean that there's, uh, it's a one-to-many situation. One customer has multiple orders. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, if I sort on the customer co uh, company name, you can see that none of those are blank. And let's sort in the order uh, amount, and none of those are blank. So, uh, you know, the records are on both sides. Now, let's go back to design view. And I'm going to double-click on that line which is the relationship. Uh, now the second one is called a left adder joint. It's going to show all of the records from the customer's table even if they don't have a match in the orders table. Uh, I'm going to click on OK and I'm going to run the query. Now notice how this time we had 801 records whereas before we had 799. So again I'm going to store it in the customer field and they're all filled in. Let's sort on the order amount. Now notice here that there's two records uh, that are blank on the order size. So that means there's a, cu uh, a customer that doesn't have a corresponding order. And there's the two records where that's the case. So that's why we have 801 records. Uh, there's two additional records here. So the reason that that happened is because we did a left adder join. That's going to show all of the customers even if they don't have a matching order. Now, on the other hand, let's double click on that line and let's make it a right adder joint. That's going to show all the orders, even if they don't have a matching customer. Let's click on OK and then we'll run that. Here we have 830 records, which is all the orders. Now, if I sort on the order amount, they're all going to be there. However, if I sort on company name, we can see that there's a bunch of records that are in the orders table, but don't have a matching customer in the customers table. Uh, in fact, if you can imagine, there's 31 of those, uh, which makes sense. Because uh, we, before we had 799 records plus the 31, that's going to give us 830 records. So the first one is called an inner join. In that case, uh, the, uh, it's only going to show the ones where it matches on both sides. The left adder join is going to show all of the records from the customers table, even if they don't have a matching order in the orders table. And then the right adder join is going to show all of the records in the orders table, even if they don't have a matching record in the customers table. Now let's put it back to a, uh, an inner join. Now at this point, I'm going to add a new table. Uh, by the way, when we run this, we're back to the 799 records. Uh, I'm going to add a new table here. I'm going to right click here and pick on show table. 
And then let's this time let's use the uh, the shippers table. Now notice how it, it couldn't find a matching field. Now I happen to know that the matching field is the ship via. So you can you can join two tables together even if the fields don't have the matching name. What they do have to have is the same data type. It doesn't matter if the name is not the same, but they do have to have the same data type. So I'm going to click on ship via and drag it over to the shipper ID. Now in this case, I'm going to use the shipper ID from the shippers table and also the phone number from the shippers table. By the way, when you have a multiple table query, if you look on the table row, it'll tell you which field, uh, excuse me, which table those fields are coming from. I'm going to go ahead and pick on run. Now notice how we still have the 799 records, but now we have the shipper ID and we have the phone number as well. All right, so um, in this case, you, you, can, you can bring in multiple uh, uh, queries, I mean, multiple tables into this query. Each new table would have to be joined to one of the other tables, uh, not all of them. If I brought a fourth table in, it would only have to be linked to one of the table, not all of them. Now, as a matter of fact, let's see what happens if we don't have any relationships between the tables. I'm going to click on this line and then delete it. And then I'll click on this line and also delete it. So now we have a multiple table query, but the tables are not joined together. Um, before we had 799 records. Now if you'll notice, now we have 216,630 records. Something is seriously wrong. And if you scroll down, you're going to see that you have lots of duplicates now. So it actually multiplied the tables together. Uh, so it took the orders table, which is uh, 830 records, and it multiplied that by the customers table, which is 87 records, and then it multiplied that by the shippers table, which is three records. So it basically gave you every possible combination. That's why there's 216,630 records here. So my really important point is that if you have multiple tables in your query, you better make sure that they're linked together. So let's put the links in again. I'm going to pick on the customer ID and drag it to the customer ID over here on the orders table. And then that's back, back to being an inner join. And then I'll pick on the ship via and drag it to the shipper ID. And that's being uh, an inner join again. And now we pick on run and notice how we're back to our normal solution of 799 records. So you can see how important that, um, that the join is between the tables. If we added a fourth table, we'd have to find a way to link it to one of the other tables as well. So that should give you some uh, useful information when you're making a multiple table query here in Access. Now, I want to show you one other thing that's really uh, useful. I'm going to close this window. And I'm going to pick on, uh, actually, I don't need to save that. Now, in this case, I want to, uh, there's a special query that we can run that will show you which records are in one table that are not in another table. So I'm going to pick on the Create menu. Then you come over here and you pick on Query Wizard. Uh, now, here's one that's called a Find Unmatched Query Wizard. That will show you all the records that are in one table that are not in another table. So I'll click on OK. In this case, I want to find all of the records in the table customers. I just double click on that. And then now you pick on the second table. So I'll pick on table orders. Now it's looking for the matching field, which is in this, in this case is the customer ID. So I want to pick on the customer ID on this side. I'll pick on the customer ID on this side. And then we'll pick on the, uh, the double arrow. And notice how that causes the matching field. So really, in order to do this one, there has to be a common field between the tables. Again, it doesn't have to have the same field name, although it always helps when it is the same field name, but they do have the same data type. Uh, I'm going to pick on Next. Now, it's asking me, what fields do I want to see? I'll pick all of them. And we'll pick on Next. And we'll pick on Finish. It turns out that there's two records that are in the Customers table that are not in the Orders table. Here, the, the query is called Customers Without Matching Orders. And I'm going to save that. Now let's try it the reverse way. I want to see if there's any orders that
that are not in the customer's table. So I'll click on create, we'll do query, um, query wizard, and pick on find unmatched. Now I'll pick on table orders, and then the second table will be customers this time. The matching field is still the customer ID. All right, it's very important that you would pick something there. We'll pick on next. Again, I'm going to show all of the fields. And we'll pick on next. And we'll pick on finish. And now, as you can see, there's actually 31 records, like we counted before, that are in the orders table that don't have a matching customer in the customers table. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close this window. Notice how we have a query that's called customers without matching orders, and we have a, a query that's called orders without matching customers. What helped us out there was when we picked on create and then the query wizard, and then that was called the find unmatched query wizard. So hopefully it gives us some information about making your multiple table queries here in Microsoft Access.